gauge dog me balancing Hey there, Lincoln Riffers, how are you doing? I'm Asaf Levavi and I welcome you to the second lesson in Finally Understanding Chords, the full 10 lesson chord theory course right here on Lincoln Riff in which we unlock the neck for guitar harmony. Uh, everything from simple chords to complex chords, everything in between, I'm gonna show you any embellishment you can think of, any chord shape you can think of, and why it's there and why it looks the way it does. And uh, for that, we need to know the basic chord structure. So even if you think you know the minor and major chords, we're not talking about shapes here, we're talking about why the notes uh, are in the position they are, why the chord looks like this and not like this for example. So um, if you haven't watched the first video, I strongly recommend it. And also go watch the introduction because there I introduce this table, the embellishment table. Okay, It's very, very important to know because this kind of puts everything in order. Uh, the guitar isn't in order. Okay, It's not like a keyboard. So this table will help keep us straight. So if you have no idea what these numbers mean, go watch the introduction. I break it down for you. So. In this second video, we're gonna discuss the most important embellishment of them all, the seventh. The seventh chord, the minor seventh chord, and the major seventh chord, okay? Um, and again, we're not discussing the shape itself, we're talking about why it's shaped like that. So even if you know seventh chords, this may come in handy because uh, the seventh chords are actually basis for more complex chords. So um, how do you find the seventh? If you remember, there are two voicings on the guitar neck, uh, E and G. Everything else is derived from that. So let's start with an A chord, okay, this time, just, you know, to vary it a little. So uh, if you remember, the voicing of an A chord is one, five, eight, three, and five. And if you remember, you have a major third and a minor third. Okay? depending on whether you're playing a major or a minor chord. It's that simple. But uh, you also have a major seven and a minor seven. So um, it's the same thing. The major seven is the seventh note of the major scale and the minor seven note is the seventh note of the minor scale. And it's really easy to check it out. Um, if you have an A chord, then what is the seven close to? It's close to eight, right? So this is the eighth note. It's the octave of the root. So eight. Below it, a fret below, you have the major seven. A fret below, you have the minor seven. So um, if you want to hear how they do with their respective scales, then play a major chord and add the major seven. Okay, yeah, fret below this. So it's one on the third string. So it's a major seventh chord, probably the most uh, pleasant chord in existence. Major seven, sounds great, right? Now let's play a minor chord. Okay, and let's add a minor seven, two frets below the eight, because it's eight, major seven, minor seven. So a minor chord with its respective seventh note, a minor seventh chord. Sounds great, doesn't it? But what happens if you add a major seven note to a minor chord? You get this. This is kind of a sophisticated chord. When you first hear it, it doesn't sound that good, but in time you grow to like it. It's a really nice chord actually, when you get to know it. So it's a minor major seven. But if we take it the other way around, we get the most important chord of them all, the seventh chord. The seventh chord, the dominant seventh chord, is a major chord with a minor seventh. That creates the tension. And this is the basis for all tension in all music. Maybe except for a sus4 chord resolving itself for the major chord, but you know, don't take, you know, the, the, don't take me to court for saying that. So, um, the seventh chord. It's a major chord 
with the minor seven. Remember, eight, major seven, minor seven. This is the seventh chord, and that's why it sounds the way it does, and that's why it works, because this is a tritone. And uh, a tritone, uh, when put in this order, in this sequence, inside this chord, wants to resolve itself to D. <clears throat> but we're not discussing theory here, we're talking about chord theory. So, that's a seventh chord. Every time you see a seven, you know that it's A major with a minor seven. So you can actually write A big M, small M, seven. But nobody does that because uh, by now everybody knows that a seventh chord looks like this on the guitar and sounds like this. But I wanted you to know why. Now you know why. Now let's go to um, E7. It's exactly the same thing. You have eight here. So eight and then the major seven. Okay, major with a major seven. You have the minor seven, okay, minor chord with the minor seven, or major chord with minor seven, which is a seventh chord. Now let's go to D. In D we have the eight here. So the major seven will be a fret below that, and the minor seven will be a fret below that. Okay, starts to make sense. Now, let's discuss the G uh, shape. Okay, now in G, you have one, three, five, one. This is an open string. You can do a lot with that. So you go to the five. So it's one, three, five. And if you look at the table, you have five, sharp five, six, minor seven, major seven. So, um, if you add this to G, you get this, and you get G7, but this is a more closed shape, it's a more jazzy shape, and you have another 7 there if you go an octave up. If you go an octave up, you get the 8 here, so 8, minor 7, major 7, and let's give it a listen. Eight, major seven, very, very pleasant, minor seven, okay, which is not a minor seventh chord, it's the minor seven on the major chord, so it's a seventh chord, okay, it's a major chord, major, this is the major third, minor third here, but you also have the third um, here, so you can't really uh, make this a minor because it's an open string. Again, trouble. The G shape is pretty peculiar. You can't really overuse it, so we'll discuss the uses of it in a second. I just want to show you that it works. So, G, G major 7, G7. Now let's talk about the applications. The applications show up in the C chord, okay? And that's uh, another very, very important thing to know because you have C, right? And uh, you have one, three, five, eight, three. So uh, we'll take the fifth, open third string. So five, sharp five, or flat 13, no reason to say that yet, then 6, and then 7, the minor 7, and the major 7, so this would be C7, remember, it's 5, sharp 5, 6, 7, and you probably recognize this chord, it's C7, C major 7 would be this, or this, because 4 on the 3rd string and the open 2nd string are the same note. But more importantly, because this is 8 in the sequence of the notes. So if this is 8, this is the major 7. I really hope that it's starting to make sense. Okay, because the moment you learn to see it, you will never unsee it. So this is the major 7 or this. Well, sounds a little bit 
strange over here, but in chords like this one, it makes a world of difference. And it's the, because the major seven is here in the C shape. Okay, so C7, C major seven. Um, or C minor, seven. Okay, remember this is the third, the major third. This is the minor third. Okay, this is the seven, the minor seven. Okay. Now, um, let's go back to E and A, and we have another seven to find. If this is A, if this is five, then we can count the same way we did in G and C. Five, sharp five, six, seven. So A, seven. Okay, or barring for two. Okay, and you have seven. Again, because five, sharp five, six, seven. And of course, major seven. Okay, on four, just count it. Just go by the table and count it. And you can also start adding them up. You can do a seven like this with a seven here. You can uh, do a major seven with the major seven here. A bit uncomfortable, but still possible. Um, and you can do a minor seven here. A minor seven with a high seven as well, and a low seven. Same thing with E. You have the five here, second string. So it's the same thing. Seven is here, major seven is here. So E, seven. E, major seven. Or E seven with a higher seven as well. Starting to make sense? starting to really build up and understanding the, the chord shapes. Now you know the sevens and we're gonna build on them when we start talking about complex uh, chords. Then the next lesson we're gonna discuss sus2, sus4 and add nine and the difference between sus2 and add nine. We're also gonna talk a little bit about nine. There's a difference between a ninth chord and an add nine chord. We're gonna discuss that uh, too, but I'll let you go practice and I'll see you in the next lesson. Thank you very much for watching. Bye for now.